Welcome back. We're hearing a lot about people that are concerned about side effects that are associated with the vaccines and their risk. And these risks are worrying people to the point where they are avoiding getting the vaccine. So when it comes to the vaccines, what are the risks versus the benefits? First, let's talk about the problem of so many people being unvaccinated and the complications associated with that problem. You could end up very, very sick or dying. You could cause a more lethal variant of this virus. So what are the most significant adverse side effects that the media and non-medical people and some medical people have put out there that I think have really scared some people into not knowing what to do and not taking the vaccine. There are four that I want to share with you. One, anaphylactic shock. Two, Guillain-Barre syndrome, aka GBS. Three, thrombosis, thrombocytopenia and four myocarditis. So let's talk about number one, anaphylactic shock, the severe allergic reactions. And I think we heard a lot about that initially. People were fainting and a, lo a lot of things were said about that early on. However, people usually experience these symptoms minutes after the vaccine. And hence, um, once you get the vaccine, they want you to to stay there five, 10 minutes to see if you're going to have a reaction. Symptoms include difficulty breathing, swelling of the hands, face, and tongue. And of course, we know if the tongue swells too much, that could lead to respiratory problems. We also see racing of the heart and, another, and, and a number of other symptoms that can be associated with an allergic reaction. This one particular side effect, remember, got blown way out of proportion to the point that many people felt there there were a number of people that were dying of this allergic reaction and in fact there were no deaths associated with anaphylactic reaction there was a study that looked at 9.9 .9 million dosages of pfizer that were given and 7.5 million doses of moderna the results demonstrated there were 66 cases of anaphylactic shock in the Pfizer group, which turned out to be about 4.7 cases per million, and 19 cases of anaphylactic shock in the Moderna group, which turns out to be about 2.5 cases per million. Very, very infrequent. The chances of dying from getting struck by lightning are greater than dying from anaphylactic shock. So that really kind of puts things in perspective. As of July 22nd, 187 million people received at least one dose of a vaccine, and this adverse effect was very, very rare. Number two, vaccine-induced thrombosis slash thrombocytopenia, aka VITT, which is vaccine-induced thrombosis, thrombocytopenia. Thrombosis meaning clot, clotting. Thrombocytopenia meaning low platelets. Platelets are the chemicals that keep us from bleeding. And so if you have thrombocytopenia, you're gonna have bleeding. There are a few things we need to know about patients who have this side effect, such as these patients carry an antibody called platelet factor four antibody. The strange thing about this is this antibody is typically seen in patients that are in the hospital receiving heparin. And heparin is a blood thinner that is given to all patients in hospitals in the United States that are in the hospital that are just laying in the bed. Laying and not moving around puts one at, at risk for having a clot. And so the hospitals give these patients this heparin. So when you look at the patients that are given this heparin, about one to 2% of the patients develop this 
uh, antibody, this factor four antibody, which can lead to clotting, very, very low. It's a big mystery why patients receiving AstraZeneca in other countries, because we, don't, we haven't given AstraZeneca in the United States, we've given Johnson & Johnson. So AstraZeneca in other countries and Johnson & Johnson in the United States have developed this problem, this clotting and bleeding problem. This unusual antibody that is formed in the body attacks the body's own platelet. That's the problem. Prior to COVID, the condition was diagnosed in only approximately 50,000 people per year. Not a lot of individuals. Some important things to consider when thinking about this clotting and bleeding is that there is an increased risk in women that are less than 60 years of age who receive the vaccine and you typically see the symptoms occurring within 15 days of receiving the vaccination. Rarely has this been seen in patients who have received Moderna or Pfizer. So this is um, a problem that we've seen with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. However, after any vaccine, look out for these symptoms. Increased bruising, prolonged bleeding, or little red spots on your skin, which are called petechiae, which means that there's a, a you know, the thrombosis, the thrombocytopenia may be getting started. This phenomenon occurs about two weeks after receiving the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Just to put this in perspective, as of June 30th, there had been 12.6 million doses of Johnson & Johnson given in the United States, and there had only been 38 cases of this vaccine-induced thrombosis, thrombocytopenia, aka VITT, documented. That comes out to three cases per million. That is not significant. These are some important points to remember with this uh, Johnson & Johnson vaccine and this VITT. It occurs 15 days after getting the vaccine. No cases have been seen with Moderna or Pfizer. And the highest rates were in females 30 to 49 years of age. Number three, Guillain-Barre syndrome, aka GBS. This is a rare autoimmune disorder where the immune system attacks the sheath of the neuron. And typically this is seen after a respiratory or gastrointestinal viral infection. It is characterized by weakness and sometimes paralysis of the body, starting peripherally like in the hands and the feet and the symptoms move into the body, like the central body. Now let's look at how often this has happened after 12.5 million doses of Johnson & Johnson. There were only 100 cases of Guillain-Barre syndrome. We only saw this with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Most cases were seen in males between the ages of 50 and 60, so males have a higher risk. If you are a male between the ages of 50 and 60 and you have you have the option of Johnson & Johnson's versus Moderna or Pfizer, I would go with the Moderna or Pfizer. But getting the vaccine is, the, the benefit of getting the vaccine far outweighs the risk. So if, you, if Johnson & Johnson is the only one available, I would get it. Last side effect, it's called myocarditis slash pericarditis. Myocarditis is inflammation of the heart muscle. Pericarditis is inflammation of the lining of the heart. These two problems often can occur together. Symptoms are wide ranging from unnoticeable to death. The symptoms, the common symptoms you see are chest pain, uh, shortness of breath, some swelling, palpitations, loss of consciousness, and fever. If pericarditis is present, people complain of uh, sharp pain, worse symptoms if they're lying flat, and they get better if they sit up straight. 
The important consideration here is that this problem has only been seen with Pfizer and Moderna. Highest risk with this side effect is in males, puberty to 30. That's important because when we started giving the vaccine to those that were 12 years of age and older, we saw very few cases of myocarditis in those uh, children, males that had it. However, as of June 30th, there had been 141 million second doses of messenger RNA given to males older, older than 18. There were 497 cases of myocarditis, myocarditis in those males, 18 to 30. That comes out to 3.5 cases per million of the second dose. And, and, and I left out the fact that this typically occurs after the second dose of Moderna or Pfizer. There were no confirmed myocarditis death. Things to remember about myocarditis. It hasn't been seen in Johnson & Johnson. It occurs about four days after the vaccination is given, and it's greatest in ages 16 to 19, males. Treatment is very simple, rest and anti-inflammatories, and most people do very well with this. The problem is we've talked about myocarditis and pericarditis and we talked about a very low rate, um, treatment is simple, people do well. However, if you get infected with COVID-19 Delta variant, this myocarditis, pericarditis could be a real problem. And you could, um, now we're seeing kids with long hauler syndrome, AKA long COVID. Getting myocarditis through the vaccine last a few days, treatment simple, versus getting infected and having myocarditis and having a long course of this disease. You gotta weigh the risk versus the benefit. So we have talked about a lot of specific adverse events with specific vaccines. So what does all this mean in general? One, men, ages 50 to 69 who get Johnson & Johnson, there is a slight increased risk with developing Guillain-Barre syndrome. Very slight. Remember, there were only 100 men that contracted it or developed Guillain-Barre. Number two, women 30 to 49, slight increased risk at developing vaccine-induced thrombosis, thrombocytopenia, aka VITT. With the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. Number three, males 18 to 29, slight increased risk of developing myocarditis. I have trouble with that, myocarditis, after the second dose. Number four, benefits far, far outweigh the risk of these vaccines. And number five, very, these vaccines are very effective at decreasing risk of severe sickness and hospitalization and death. Well, that's it for today. Be sure to subscribe for more health and wellness videos. Like this video if you found it helpful and we'll see you next week.